بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome to uh, part two of this presentation, Interest Bearing Transaction in the U.S. Uh, who were here yesterday? Who attended part one? Okay, that's good, alhamdulillah. So uh, after covering the <coughs> theoretical part, the Fiqh foundation of riba, it's now time to implement this information, this kind of knowledge, on the actual real transactions and I want you to be as interactive as possible to tell me which of those transactions are haram and which, which one is halal based on what we have understood uh, from uh, part one yesterday. Loan contract versus sale contract, riba al-fadl versus riba and nasia, user um, um, uh, items, food, uh, currency versus anything else. You still remember all these details, right? Maybe? Hopefully, inshallah. So let's start with, with bank loan. You approach a, a conventional bank and you apply for a loan, whether investment loan or personal loan. This is definitely interest-bearing loan. You know from day one that you have to pay more than the principal that you have taken from the, from the uh, uh, bank. This is actually the riba that has been indicated in the ayah. This is the riba uh, or the meant riba. Um, in this particular ayah, which is the interest-bearing loan. You borrow money and you know from day one that you have to pay more than the uh, principal you have, uh, you have taken. Late fees, uh, we already covered maybe part of it um, yesterday. Just make sure that you pay you know, the, 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 the utility bill in full before the due date. Do not go with the minimum payment and do not intentionally delay your payment after the due date. Uh, the, the condition itself is not allowed, but we are not in a position to discuss with the utility companies or utility yeah, companies that we are Muslims, we practice you know, according to our deen, we, cannot, we are not in that position. So just make sure that you pay the utility bill in full before the, before the due date. When you have a credit card, it means that you are borrowing money from the credit company. So this is a, a, like a pure and explicit loan contract. All the restrictions we have discussed yesterday regarding loan contract have to be implemented, implemented here. When you hold the credit card, it means that you have a certain line of credit. You can use your credit card for purchasing, you can use it for cash withdrawal, you can use it for paying your bills online. Certain charges, certain charges are unjustified. They do not have any meaning other than to be riba. You received your uh, uh, credit statement, $1,000, for example, and the due date is August 25th. If you pay in full after August 25th, you have to pay extra. And that extra actually means none but riba because you have borrowed this amount of money and you have to pay more than what you have taken. So delaying your payment is not an option. And until, until now, I'm not saying that holding a credit card is, is haram or halal. I'm just, you know, breaking it down to different charges. How much you have, I mean, what are the different charges that you might get involved in and which one of them is allowable and which one is not allowed. So delaying your payment is not an option. You have to make sure that you pay the total amount in full. Payment plan is not an option. When you go with the minimum payment, sometimes $35, 100 more or less, it means that the total amount will not stay as is. The $1,000 in our example will not, will not stay $1,000 anymore if you go with less than the total amount. So do not delay your payment and do not go with payment plan. Make sure that you pay in full and you pay the total, total amount before the, before the due date. Some other charges might be justifiable, like uh, some credit companies, not all of them. If you use your credit card for international transactions, they charge you uh, 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 like a, a, a wire transfer, which is fine, like to wire the money from one country to another one. And they charge you um, currency exchange, and that is halal, because they exchange the American dollars to the current uh, or local currency. Some of them actually, some of them, not all of them, count the international transaction as if it is a cash withdrawal. And thus, they charge you interest on the actual amount that you have used for that international 
transaction. If that is the case with your credit card, make sure you do not, you do not use your credit card for international transaction. Any other charges are justifiable. Wire transfer, currency exchange, profit, that is, that is fine. Now, to determine the status of using credit card, we need to uh, acknowledge this kind of classification that is agreed upon, agreed upon, that the prohibited matters in our Sharia are not in the same level. Some of them are extremely prohibited, severely prohibited, and some of them are still prohibited, but they are not as severe as the first category. The highest one, the worst one, is what is called al-haram ulidati, whatever is prohibited by itself whatever is prohibited by itself. And the second category, which is less prohibited, is al-haram ghayri whatever is prohibited because of it is potential consequences. It might lead or mislead to something haram. Haram ul a good example for that, is uh, intoxication, drinking alcoholic beverage. That is haram ul Anything else, manufacturing, buying and selling, transport, uh, uh, transporting uh, khamr, is, is definitely haram but it's not as haram as consuming or drinking, drinking al-khamr. Drinking is prohibited by itself. Anything else is prohibited because of its potential consequences. Now, when it comes to uh, riba, it's the same concept. Being involved in, in, in a riba transaction from day one, you borrow money and you know that the 1,000 have to be paid back, 1,100 is haram, okay, is haram. And it is more severe and more prohibited than being involved in a transaction in which there is a late fees. There is a late fees. Late fees means that if you, if you default, if you, if you did not pay on time, then you will be charged. But the question here, what if you paid on time? Will you still be charged extra money? No. So that is, that's, that's haram al ghayri. And if you go back to, uh, if you go, uh, go back to uh, late fees or charges that you uh, always see it in your utility bill, that's haram ul ghayri. Okay, if you pay the utility bill on time, no consequences. It's just $100 for the electricity, for the water, for the cell phone that you use, whatever. But if you delay your payment, if you defaulted in paying on time, then you have to pay, you have to pay extra. So that's still haram. That is still haram. And in the ideal situation, we suppose not to have late fees to start with. We suppose not to have a condition or a clause in the agreement that in case of delaying your payment, you will be charged such and such uh, amount, whether it is like, you know, a um, lump sum or fixed amount or, or percent. But, but again, we are not in a position, you know, to negotiate all these details with the credit. This is what they have. You take it, as they say, or you take it or you, or you leave it. So this is what they, this is what they have. Okay. Now, what does this classification have to do with our topic? Haram ul is the most severe one. I want you to remember these Arabic terms. Haram ul versus haram ul Prohibited by itself, prohibited because of its potential consequences, because it might lead to, it might lead to haram. Now, here is the, here is the connection. Al haram ul to be barura. Whatever is counted or classified as haram ul by itself, could not be permitted unless there is a necessity. And in some cases, life or death situation. Okay? But al haram li ghayrihi, whatever is prohibited because of its potential consequences, would be permitted in case of public and general need. There is a need for it, then you can, you can go for it. Okay? It's not, in most cases, not a life or, or death situation, but there is a, there is a, a general need for it. There is a public need for it. Okay? your life will not be as easy as if you, like, you know, fulfill that need. Now, when it comes to having credit card, is it, uh, is there a need for it for us Muslims living in the U.S.? I'm not talking about someone lives in, 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 in Pakistan or in Jordan or, or, or in Algeria. Up to date, up to, uh, you know, as of now, the financial system there is, is still very simple. And people until today, like, you know, transact with cash money. It's not the case for us Muslims in the U.S. Some points of sale do not accept cash money. They do not accept even debit card. They do not accept even personal check. It has to be credit card. So there is a need for it. You cannot build your own credit history without having credit card, right? Uh, you cannot do some transactions like you book your tickets online, for example, without having 
physical. So there is a, generally speaking, there is a public need for it. Maybe your need is more than mine, and mine more than her. That is very possible. But generally speaking, is there any need, legitimate need for using credit card for Muslims living in the U.S. or in the West in general? My answer is yes. And it's not necessity, by the way. It's not a life or death situation, but there is a need. There is a need for it. So having this, uh, so there is a need for it. Now, if you want to apply this, this fiqh maxim or this qaida uh, fiqhiyya, al-haram li ghayrihi tubihu al haja Now, when it comes to the haram involved in using credit card, is it haram li dhatihi or haram li ghayrihi, based on what you understood? Haram li dhatihi or li ghayrihi? Haram li ghayrihi means that in, in certain cases, if you, for example, defaulted in paying in full, if you defaulted in paying before the due date, if you decided to go with, uh, with, uh, with the minimum payment, if you have used your uh, uh, credit card for international transaction where there is a charge for that, if you used your credit card for, uh, for cash withdrawal, then definitely there is a riba involved here. But the question here, what if not? What if you did not get involved in any of these aforementioned transactions? You can hold your credit card for years and years, for decades and decades, without paying one single, one single penny as an interest. Am I correct? So all these, all these like, you know, scenarios that we discussed are among al haram wa ghayri. It's not prohibited by itself. There is a, it is prohibited because of its potential consequence. You, you expose yourself to riba in case of one, two, three, or four, five. But if not, then you're good to go. There is no riba involved. So that uh, al haram wa ghayrihi prohibited because of its potential consequences is holding credit card. To be hul haja. It would be permitted in case of public and general need. So using credit card is permissible as needed. Now, I have a credit card, by the way. If I decide to go back tomorrow to Jordan or to Algeria or to uh, Yemen, for example, then using credit card there is prohibited, believe it or not. Prohibited completely. Why? Because it still has some clauses which are like void and, and invalid. Basically, I'm, I'm not even supposed to agree to pay interest. But because of the general need, here is where the you know, exception comes from. Because we live in the US. We are not living in Yemen or Saudi Arabia or in Jordan. Okay, we live in, in the US. And the financial system here is way more sophisticated than back home. That's why, as long as you live in the West in general, in the US in particular, then using credit card is permissible as, as needed. Annual fees are uh, allowed. They are not directly connected with the actual use of the, uh, of the credit card. Uh, paying service fees for cash withdrawal is, is fine. However, you need to be careful because if you choose your credit card, not debit card, if you choose your credit card for cash withdrawal, you will be charged interest. Interest means riba, means interest. So do not use your credit card for uh, cash withdrawal. Do not use any ATM machine to you know, withdraw cash money. You can use your, de your debit card for that, but not your, not your credit card. Muslim, Muslim merchants, I, I, will, I will break maybe after five, seven minutes, inshallah, we'll open the floor for question and answer. Now, Muslim merchants can still accept credit card. Okay, if you want to charge your uh, client $100 and you accept credit card, you know in advance that you will be receiving $98, $97. And he knows that. And the credit company knows that they will be charging you as a merchant a certain amount of money. As long as there is a mutual agreement and there is nothing like in contradiction with the principles of, of the prohibition of riba, then it is, uh, it is okay. You pay less than $100 okay, as a customer, and he receives less than $100. There is no riba involved. And instead of selling a certain commodity for $100, you know in advance that, that you will be receiving $98. So you are making a discount by choice or by force. You are making a discount for your client, and there is no, there is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong with that. Credit transfer. You know what this means? Credit transfer fees, right? Like in, uh, when when you have an uh, like outstanding balance with, with the Chase, okay, and the grace period or the introductory period is over, and you have to pay immediately. Otherwise, you will be charged interest. So the other option is to open another credit card. Is that correct? And the other credit card, credit card B, offer you what is called credit transfer or free credit transfer. 
or interest-free credit transfer. Yes, it is interest-free. They transfer the fund or the loan from Chase, for example, to Capital Loan. But the trick here is that they charge you a certain amount of money okay, for that service, for like transferring or wiring uh, or changing the debt, the, the, the loan, I'm sorry, from Chase to Capital One. It's a one-time charge, one-time charge. And unfortunately, it's not a fixed amount. It's a certain percentage. It could be one, two, three percent, whatever. Now, the, 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 the vague part here, okay, the very questionable you know, part here of this transaction is that why they connect the charge and make a certain percentage. And I would love to see credit transfer for a certain fees, like lump sum. For each transaction, whether it is 1,000 or 100,000, let's, let's say $300, regardless. If that is the case, I will feel like more comfortable saying yes, it is halal. But when they connect it to a certain percentage, it raises a big question mark why you want to charge certain percentage. However, I do not dare saying it's haram, it is halal, because they, they make it clear from the beginning that we do not charge you interest for that. It's only one time service fees to transfer it from, for example, from Chase to Capital One, so you can, you can, you can go for it. Uh, Secured card actually is uh, another kind of credit cards. If you um, have come recently to the U.S. and you apply for uh, like a regular credit card, your application will be denied because you do not have any credit history. So the option you have here is to open what is called secured credit card. You just choose the line of credit that you want, let's say $10,000, and you pay a security deposit $10,000 and they open line of credit for $10,000 and you start using it. The, the, the question here, if you, let's say for example that you, you did so, and you had $10,000 line of credit, okay, usually they sign an agreement with you for, let's say 12 or 18 months. Uh, after two or three months, you already consume those $10,000. You have used all these 10,000. Now if you change your mind and say, you know what, I do not need this service anymore, I'm gonna just close my account. So you picked up the phone and talked to the credit company, tell them, listen, I had a $10,000 line of credit, I use my 10,000, so please, you know, shut down my account. Will it go this way? No. They will not allow you shutting down or just closing your credit card because you have used those 10,000. Because those $10,000 are not for your personal use. They are security deposit. You pay them as security deposit. So if you want to cancel that credit card, that's fine. You need to pay them those $10,000 that you have used, okay, and then they close they close the account, and then they send you the other $10,000 security deposit. This is the way that they run their, their business. So my point here is that do not get confused. Do not think that this secured, security credit card is a debit one. It's not. Debit card means that you have your actual real halal money deposited in your account, and you start withdrawing from your money. It's not the case here. What you have deposited is not for your personal use. This is a security deposit. It's a security deposit. Like when you uh, rent an apartment, for example, they ask you for one month security deposit. Is that correct? So if you, uh, if you defaulted, for example, or you uh, like delayed your payment and said, you know what, you have my security deposit, just, just count it toward my rent. They will say, no, it doesn't, it doesn't go this way. This is security deposit, not the actual rent money. When it comes to credit card, this is security deposit, not the actual money that you borrow from that credit company. So you cannot, you cannot do that. You need to pay them off the ten thousand dollars in our example they will close your account and they will send you your money back sometimes you receive more than what you have deposited and that extra money is is riba is, is haram because usually they, they do not sleep on the money they just you know rent it for they lend it for for riba for seven percent they give you one or two percent and they keep the rest for themselves whatever extra money you receive on top of the original amount that you deposit as security deposit is haram just get rid of that of that money Debit card is different. Debit card means, as I said, you have an actual real halal money. You, you, you open a checking account and you start withdrawing money by using your debit card. Obviously, annual fees is just a service uh, uh, fees, so it is, it is halal. Make sure that you have sufficient fund before you use your debit card. Because if you have, for example, $200 only, okay, and you use your, your, your debit card for a transaction of $300, Usually, usually, it goes through. Am I correct? However, you have to pay $30, $35, they call it, 
overdraft charge. What do you think about this overdraft charge? Is it haram or halal? It's not called riba, it's called overdraft charge. Is it haram or halal? Is it riba or not? Why? There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. If you have only 200, if you have only 200, and you made a transaction of $300, technically, fiqh-wise, fiqh what does this mean? It means that you are borrowing the extra, as the brother said, you are borrowing the extra $100. And if the, if the deal is to pay them off the $100 only, no more or no less, that's fine. But they do not allow you to pay only the $100. They charge you what is called overdraft charge. Why we say it's prohibited? Because our, 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 transla our interpretation of the transaction is that you are borrowing money from the bank with some financial consequence. You have to pay them overdraft charge. Now, if that overdraft is one dollar or, or, or fifty-five dollars, it doesn't make any difference. We're talking about the concept, not the you know not the figure amount. So, do not use the bottom line here. Do not use your debit card if you do not have sufficient, sufficient, sufficient funds. Overdraft protection is a service that you pay for it. It's not haram, but there is no need for it. Overdraft protection means that that you allow the bank to deduct five dollars every month. So, in, in in case of overdrafting your account, you will be paying off whatever you borrowed from the bank or whatever the bank paid on your behalf with no consequences. Again, it's not, it's not haram, but I do not see any like, you know, benefit out of, out of having it. It's very simple. Just every day in the morning, you have your, your own iPhone. Just click on the Chase app and, and find out exactly how much money you have and then transact based on what you, what you have. Do not over, overdraft your, your account. Multiple cards is a multiple card actually is a debit card. Okay, sometimes in, in, in certain like points of sale, you are asked, do you want to use it as debit or a credit, right? And you say, okay, let's, let's use it as a, as a credit. Now, you cannot, you cannot use your actual real credit card as a debit card. Because debit card means that you are taking money from your actual money. However, otherwise is doable. You can use your debit card as, as a credit card. Now, if you decide to do so, do you think that, that, that your decision of using your debit card as a credit card will make it really credit card? Are you borrowing money from your, from your checking account? You are not. Okay, we said many times yesterday, This is a very like golden fiqh ruling when it comes to transactions. What matters in transactions is the essence, is the reality of the, is the nature of the transaction, not the formalities and the wording that you use. Okay? If I give you, uh, if I give you my phone, for example, I tell you this is actually a gift for you. It's not a, it's not something to buy. This is a gift. However, you have to gift me back uh, ten dollars. We are not calling it a sale contract. We call it a gift. So I gift you uh, the, the, the recording machine and you gift me back $10. What do you think? Is this a gift or, or, or a sale? That's a sale, okay? That's, that's, a, that's a transaction. I mean, I, I sell you something for a certain amount, right? Although we have called it otherwise, but actually what matters is the reality, the nature, the essence of the transaction, not the wording that we, that we use, not the wording that we use. So back to the point here. If I decide to use my 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 debit card as a credit card it does not convert the transaction to be to be a loan it is not a loan by the way why sometimes we prefer or we have we have to use our debit card as a credit card why thank you sometimes you do not have sufficient funds and you do not want the transaction to be reflected immediately because if you use your debit card and you check your account, you will see it just on the spot right away, right? So if you do not have sufficient fund and you want to hold that transaction for a few business days, then you use your debit as a, as a credit card. And sometimes use it for a different reason. Different reason. What kind of benefits? That is correct. Use it for some, for, for some points, right? That's correct. Another reason. Sometimes they do not even accept, like the point of sale do not, does not accept uh, debit card. It has to be used credit card. So again, 
whatever the reason might be, using your debit card as a credit card does not make it a credit, it's still, still a debit card. Saving account. Let me just put you on, on the spot. Saving account. What do you think? I'm not going to go to that slide. Saving account. What do you think? Do you think that opening saving account is riba or not? If it is riba, is it haram li dhati or haram li ghayrihi? If you do not raise your hand, you will, you, you will be in trouble because I'm going to just choose. <laughs> so someone has to, not to scratch his head, but has to raise his hand. Okay, go ahead. So, so can you interpret it like more accurately? Can you use the same term that we used yesterday? You was not here. Your answer is correct, but I want to hear like certain terms. حرام لغيره حرام لذاته why طيب أنا need to like listen to only only one yes go ahead yes you Now we're mixing, mixing too many things together. Let's, let's uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Now you said opening a saving account is haram li ghayrihi. You, uh, what's your name, Akhi? No, no, you. No, yes, what, what's your name? No? Now, Brother Abdul Muttalib said that opening a saving account is haram li ghayrihi, prohibited because of its potential consequences, and the reason is that you might have interest, you might not. Do you agree with him? Do you agree with him? I want to hear yes or no. No. Why no? Because saving account by default means means you get interest. Now, what is the Islamic interpretation of opening a saving account? I bet you I answered this question yesterday, but maybe you did not pay attention. Okay, let me just give you some hints. We said that RIBA might affect two different transactions, sale contract and a loan contract. Is there any sale contract here? Is there any loan contract involved here? Who said yes? No? Uh, who said yes? Do not be hesitant. I mean, yes or no? <laughs> Are just removing a fly or just saying yes or What do you think? So is there any loan contract here? Thank you. Jazakallah khair. The nature of the transaction, remember that al-ibratu fi al-uqood lil-maqasidi wal-ma'ani lal al-fadu wal-mabani. What matters in transaction is the essence, is the reality, is the nature of the transaction, not the wording and the formalities. So the bank actually is borrowing the money from you. Now is it possible that a bank that has tens of millions of dollars borrow money from a poor guy like me, three, four, five hundred dollars? It doesn't make any difference. Because this is the nature of the transaction. I give my money to the bank. Now, my principal is guaranteed by the FDIC, they call it, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC. By law, my money is guaranteed, right? Not only that, there is a certain profit, interest, riba, haram, hell, call it whatever you want. There is a certain amount on top of the principal will be given to you, guaranteed by law. If you have your saving account based on 2.5%, 3, 4, or whatever, that is, that is interest. So you are giving your money to someone, call it gift, how about that? Call it gift, okay? But your gift actually is guaranteed, and you will be receiving a certain amount, certain percentage or fixed amount, on top of the principal that you have deposited. Now, isn't it the nature of a loan contract? Did not we say yesterday that, that if the principal and its profits both are guaranteed, then that is, that's an interest-bearing loan? We said that. So opening a, save, a, a traditional saving account, if you put it this way, conventional traditional saving account is riba, it is haramun lidhati, it's prohibited by itself because once you decide to open a saving account, you know from day one that you will be, that you will be receiving extra money on top of the uh, amount that you deposited. And this actually makes that transaction haramun lidhati, prohibited 
by itself, it's not prohibited because of it is potential consequences. Wrong answer, Abdul Muttalib, sorry. Okay. Okay. I, will, I will open the floor for a question and answer. Sir. Okay, now, some people try to justify open and saving account by, like Abdul Muttalib said, he has a $50,000 saving at home. It's not safe to keep your money there. I agree with you. But there is another alternative. You can open two different checking accounts. One of them for the daily transactions, and you can release its information. This will make it like subject to identity theft. And the other checking account, you can just conceal it. Do not share its uh, information with anybody except with me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> see, I will take care of it. So if you do so, if you do so, the possibility of identity theft will, will go down to, to zero. If this is the reason behind opening a saving account. Now, the other reason, so is this point clear? No need, like no legitimate need for opening a saving account. Now, if you want to set off the inflation because, because the, the, the market value is getting less and less, that's called the, infl the, the uh, inflation, right? That is absolutely correct. But who said that this is the only way that you can set off the inflation? Why do not you invest your money directly? Why do not you invest your money, put it in a project, and make, uh, make money. You do not have time, you do not have experience, that's fine. You can partner with somebody else, give him your money, and let's establish mudaraba. Mudaraba means finance from, like money from one party, and labor and experience and operation from the other party, okay? How about, how about opening a, like a mutual, mutual fund account? How about opening a mutual fund account? How about opening a, they call it a, a brokerage account? and you limit yourself to only and only halal industry, you hold the stocks only, and you limit yourself to like halal industries, like, like maybe medicine, uh, IT, transportation, education, whatever, and you will be making some money. So do not put yourself in the corner, and you limit yourself to only one option where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it like, you know, easy for you to invest your money in a halal way. There is no justification for opening a saving account. I have heard from some people of knowledge, they said, well, here is the deal. If you open a checking account, your money will be utilized in a haram way by the bank. The bank does not sleep with the money. The bank, even if you open a checking account, they just uh, lend your money for interest. And if you open a saving account, okay, they're going to lend your money for interest. They're going to use your money anyway. By choice or by force, they're going to